All right, so what I'm going to do is show you how to install uh, this version of Spark. If you notice, it says Spark CDM 1.5, and it includes the complete VDM, EDM, and the DoveStep library. Um, first thing you want to do is go inside and install Spark 1.5. This is the factory installation, and it takes about three minutes or so depending on how fast your computer is. Uh, the faster your processors, the faster it'll install. In a minute it's going to show a sign that there it is. It shows about three minutes. And then it'll speed through, finish up writing the files, and then we'll go to the second step. Okay, and I'll hit close. Next thing I'm going to do is the crack file. What this does is overwrites the factory with one that doesn't look for registration codes or authentications. And it's done. Now, I can open up right now in Pro Tools an instrument track and open up Spark. But if I opened up Logic 10, which is a true 64-bit application, you won't see Spark in there. So I'm going to show you what to do to make Spark work in there. And it's also going to be included in the, in the package. Now, if you wanted to open up Logic 9, it would open up because Logic 9 can go from a 32-bit platform. Logic 10 is a true 64-bit platform. So in a second here, once it's done doing all of this, verifying all the plugins, it's going to open up. And I already have a template created by just doing this create a blank session. And I'll just call it a Spark Demo. You won't have to do this. This is just me showing you certain things. Uh, I'm just setting up my own Pro Tools here. Let me see. Setup, playback engine. Here, over there. Make sure that my output is built in output. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to go to preferences. And I want to select my plugins to be category and manufacturer. So when I go to my plugins, it'll also show the, you know, the category they are, EQs, dynamics, and it'll also show who they're made by. So now I'm going to open up a stereo instrument track. And if you look at the instrument track, I'm going to go to instrument and there's Spark. Now watch this. When you go into Spark, you'll see that uh, it's going through the library here. So you go up here and you see you got three rows and this one looks too shy, too little bitty uh, kit shy of being completely three rows. So you can click on any one of these you see that it's working so remember we were too shy of three rows I'm going to save Pro Tools and I'm going to I'm going to quit and now I'm going to go open up Logic 10 and Logic 10 is not going to have Spark in there And it's going through and actually registering Spark. So maybe it caught it this time. But I want to show you what to do if it doesn't catch it.
and it looked like it's hung up on Spark. And the reason for that is Spark is a 32-bit application. So I'm going to abort this, abort the scan. We can go into Logic. Once we get into Logic, you can hit plus, open up a software instrument. By default, it's going to be ePiano. And if you come down and you look, you'll notice that it's not there. For one, we aborted the scan. So here you can go to Preferences and go to Audio Units Manager, and you won't see it in there. Now let's try checking it. And once again, it's hanging up. Okay, so that's when you when you notice that it's it's not going through. There's a couple of ways to uh, to get to it, and the validation test is coming back. We're waiting on that, and as you can see, it's still hung up over here, and it's spinning and doing its thing. So now you got Spark in there. Okay. So if we couldn't have got Spark in there that way, what you would do is do this and I'm going to include this this 32 libs application right here converts 64 or 32 into 64 so let's close out of logic I'll save that First, you want to open up the key gen. And you just want to hit generate and then hit save. Open up 32 lives. Continue. Continue. And it automatically puts the code in. Go ahead and continue. Hit install. And then put your password in. close it out and now you can come to I'm going to just put this down here in the dock so I'll always have it you can open that up and it will show you all of your 32-bit plugins as of right now you don't see anything in here because we haven't installed anything yet that's 32-bit in a minute I can put some plugins in there that are 32 bit and we can convert them to 64, but that's what this plugin does. Now, if you remember, we were too shy of being a complete three rows. So now what we're going to do is go here, go into the drag and drop that I included, and as you see, we have a lot more plugins than the original. So I'm going to copy all of them. And I'm going to replace what's in the Spark library. Now, if you look at this directory file right here, you'll see that I went library, Arturia, Spark, Spark library. I also included that in this screenshot right here in case someone doesn't know how to get there. It's library, Arturia, Spark, Spark library, factory. What we're going to do is we're going to take the factory library and we're going to replace this factory library. This factory library has everything that this library has in it plus more. So we're just going to bring it over. We're going to replace it. Now remember this library originally was 1.5 or something like that. If we go command and the letter I, now you notice it's one eight. Now let's go back into logic. And I'll open up the recent one that I did, Spark Demo.
And now, go to Spark. And it's going to confirm the whole library. And now if you look at the library, you can see we've added more sounds in there. Roughly a whole nother row. It's basically what we added of new content. But this, this row has also gotten longer. So we basically added about a row and a half of uh, new sounds. So you can go through. And you can you could turn that up if you if you want to turn it up by just sliding the fader. And, you know if you want to jack the volume up. So that's how you do the uh, Spark installation. And it if it works over here, it's going to work in Pro Tools. They share the same exact library. This is the same exact Spark. So the difference between this Spark and any of the other Sparks, they all uh, have a different uh, face. Like this one is the CDM, which is Creative Drum Machine, Spark CDM. Um, all of them got the same button, same knobs, same pads. You can go into the slicers and the rollers, uh, depending on if you want, like, your note repeat to do 132, 116. You know, it, it does all of that. It has its own sequencer inside of it. It's a pretty dope drum machine. So that's it for Spark. I'm gonna close out of this. I'm gonna save that. And I'm gonna include the 32 libs inside of there. And there you have it. That is how you will install the spark library now if you notice I can't put this package out now because the factory library is gone so I'm just gonna go over here go back to the library Arturia spark spark library and I'm gonna take this factory and just copy it and paste it in there so I'll have the original for turning this into a DMG file and uh, from there putting it on the internet or emailing it to somebody or whatever you want to do with it if you notice the library alone is 1.8 uh, most free uh, file sending applications don't go any higher than 2 gigs so you would have to archive these two as part one and archive this as part two and send them separately to the same person to where they could actually download them and then they could put them all back together in a folder named this or whatever they chose to name their folder. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to take this and turn it into a DMG but I'm not going to do all of them I'm just going to do one to show you how to make a DMG. So while I'm waiting on this to copy what we're going to need is disk utilities. So to get the disk utilities, you go here, you click on applications, you come down to utilities. Once utilities open, you're going to go and you're going to get the disk utilities application. And I just keep it down here in my dock because I'm always using it for something. So now you double click on disk utilities. I'll close out all these folders. Once this utilities opens, what we're going to do is to make a DMG. I want to make a DMG of each one of these as their own separate file and send them off as part one, part two, and part three. So what you want to do is go file and then you want to go new disk image from folder. Now you can I'm gonna go to the desktop you can DMG this whole package if you have a way to send off something bigger than two gigs or you can do it this way and send it off 
one piece at a time. So I'm just going to click on that. Once again, go to File, go to New, Disk Image from Folder, go to the desktop or wherever your files are at, and go through your files until you find exactly what you're looking for. So you don't have to go in the inside of the folder, just click on the folder itself and then create an image. Okay, and then take it from there and you'll see a DMG appear in there. And once it's done making the DMG, you can double click on the DMG to test it. I should have did uh, this one instead because it's actually smaller. It's only 98 megabytes versus this one which is 841 megabytes. So it's going to take a little longer. And what this is doing is um, turning it into a uh, an ISO image or a DMG image or a toast image or a zip. They all pretty much are the same. I could have compressed this and made it smaller, but I didn't. I just left it whatever size it was. So it will compress it some if something is like, well, we'll just take a look here once, once that's done. This is probably going to go for about a minute and a half or so. Maybe shorter, but it usually goes for a minute and a half to two minutes uh, finishing up how it's doing. So what I'll do while it's doing that is I'll go hit a file, new, this image from folder, and this time I'm going to click on this one, which is the crack, which is a lot smaller. Create an image, you know, and it's compressed. I don't want to encrypt it. Just hit save. And now you see the second one coming in there. Uh, and the second one will probably beat the first one being done because of the file size. And you can see it just flying across. It's a, it's a much smaller compression file to, to work with. And then last I'll do the, the drag and drop files folder. But this is just for demo purposes, showing you how to put something in a package before you put it out there on the internet. And I'm just waiting on one of these to finish. Whichever one finishes first, great. And I'm going to force quit the other one and not even worry about it. Because I'm going to clean the packages up, put more information in each one of the packages before I actually post this. Okay, so this one is done. We've made a DMG file. If you double click on it, it'll go through and it'll open up with that in there. You can also put a picture in there or whatever it is before you actually create it with this folder uh, you can go into folder action setup and folder folder action setup allows you to you know choose certain things you can put pictures in there and all, all kind of fancy stuff if you want to put a picture in the folder you can do that you can go to get info and you can do all kind of little fancy stuff with it if you if you actually want to so now the other one has finished so now I have two DMG files that actually work this is part one it's gonna go through we already know the other one works we can do both of them and it's already open so they both will be on the desktop And the reason you don't see the white folders opening on the desktop is because in Finder and in Preferences, I had it unchecked. So I'll check it, and you'll see that they actually show up on the desktop. 
so I'll close out of this and there's a spark one and there's the crack so that's how you make a DMG file and of course this one would take a lot longer because it's, it's, it's almost two gigs and that's how you do it alright I would like to thank you for watching